Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another webinar today. My name is Sonia Siddiqui, and joining us today are two amazing people who've taken time out to tell us about how to do job hunting during this time. So hi, Zara and Peter. Hi, hi thank everyone. you so much for having us. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. We are so happy for them to do this last minute for us um, and come up with this topic and a presentation to bring to you guys. So um, before we get started, um, I just want everyone to know that you are all in listen only mode, so we won't be able to hear you. But Zara and Peter will be taking your questions towards the end of their presentation. And for that, you'll need to type your questions into the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. And for best results, please use a laptop or a desktop computer. If you're using uh, mobile devices such as cell phones or tablets, tablets, um, I suggest that you download the Zoom app. And um, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about Access. Um, we've been around for over 30 years helping job seekers such as yourselves. Um, we've got over 30 tailored programs, uh, including our sector specific bridging program. Um, and we've got six locations in the GTA with our newest seventh location opening up a new market soon. And our, um, we are also online. So everything that we are doing online is, uh, the, everything that we're delivering is all online at the moment. And I'll tell you more about it for the end. Um, and I'm just gonna hand it over to these guys uh, for their presentation. Awesome, thank you so much, Sonia. Thanks, Sonia. Okay. So we're gonna just jump right into this because I know right now there's a lot of uncertainty, people have questions, people, have, people are anxious um, with the current job market. So Peter and I are here to put you at ease and we're going to answer all your questions and give you some really good information that will help you in your job search. Um, so I have some common questions that are currently being asked by clients right now and Peter is gonna help me answer those questions. So Peter, are companies still hiring right now? Companies are actually hiring right now. And the, the important thing to remember is as much as this is a, a significant change for all of us, uh, particularly job seekers, it's a change for organizations as well. So as they're starting to acclimatize themselves to this remote style of, of communicating, um, they're pivoting and they're uh, definitely hiring, but in a different way, which we're gonna talk about today. Okay, awesome. And what are some ch what are the chances of people finding jobs right now in this current climate? Uh, the chances are still good. Um, obviously, there's a bit of a curve that everybody's trying to adapt to um, as far as adjusting to having to stay at home and having to do everything that you would normally do in everyday life from your living room or where, wherever else in your home you try to do things like that. But um, I can say that the communication I've had with a lot of members and uh, some, of, some of the larger businesses, that business is still going as usual. But like I said, there's a bit of a pivot as far as how they're delivering those, those services. Mm -hmm. So in terms of job searching, a lot of people are feeling really discouraged right now and they feel like giving up. So what advice do you have for those clients? Don't give up. Um, I know it's a, it's a little frustrating because we're kind of in a situation of unknown. We don't know which direction we're going or how long we're going to be under this lockdown, but um, treat it uh, as a task that you have to do every day and um, stay focused with some of the areas that you want to apply to and just continue that process. Uh, granted, it's gonna, it, 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 the process has changed a little bit, but we, we will still continue to do things the way we've always done them, but obviously through a virtual method of communication. Awesome. Thank you so much for answering those questions. Now, a lot of you also have questions regarding the supports and benefits that are available. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the services that Access is currently providing. For us, it's business as usual. So we're, we're providing uh, clients with one-on-one -on -one virtual support through uh, for, for consulting. Uh, we're providing resume critique assistance, um, mock interview practice. There's also bridging programs that are happening right now online. So clients are taking part in that. We also have um, online modules through e-access and um, articles and resources available uh, at all hours of the day for our clients. So it's business as usual for us. And there's also government resources that we're going to be uh, talking about a little bit further on, um, EI and the CERB benefits. 
Okay, so keep job search going. So let's talk a little bit about the different industries right now because there's, again, as I mentioned, a lot of uncertainty about which companies are hiring, which industries are, are ramping up, and which industries are slowing down. So Peter, do you mind telling us a little bit about the industries um, and uh, where they stand right now? Sure. The, so um, granted, a lot of businesses have closed. But the ones that remain open uh, are not slowing down. In, in fact, they're actually speeding up with how they need to uh, continue moving their practices along. So um, what it's important to understand is that uh, in a time like this, we would have to look at how do we change our perspective on moving forward and what sort of industries can we, can we kind of look in the peripheral and not in the typical train that we normally do. So for some of the industries, particularly that I know that I've been in touch with that are obviously still open and, and continually busy, uh, a lot of tech support, grocery stores, uh, tele telecommunications, pharmacies, anything with supply chain, transportation, things along those lines. So some of the industries are indeed ramping up. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And what about hiring? So can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Okay, so the one thing I want people to really, really absorb and understand that as much as all of us are adapting to a new way of doing things, so are businesses. So it has been a little bit of a curve for them to uh, implement new processes and policies as far as how they're doing the hiring. So uh, as they start to come online and have that become a streamlined, proficient way of doing things, um, you'll see the hiring will start to, to, to grow and expand. Okay, awesome. So how do you keep the momentum going? So let's talk a little bit about this because I know that everyone has their own ways of motivating them, themselves and keeping on track. Um, so what are some suggestions that you have for our clients who may be feeling the lack of motivation? How do we get them motivated and continue their job search? Well, I understand it is difficult from the comfort of your own home, but uh, you actually have to treat your job search as a job. So every mm -hmm. day you have to allot a specific amount of time and dedication to it. Of course, you don't have to spend the entire day doing it, but you pick a particular point of the day where you feel the most productive and dedicate a couple of hours to job searching, looking up uh, new areas of work that you could possibly apply for, keeping your resume up to date, having a number of different um, forms of resumes uh, to, to be able to just apply right away. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think that having a tracker as well also helps because if you are applying to jobs, you're tailoring and targeting your resume, having um, a tracking system will help you and um, you know, keep you motivated and it'll allow you to keep track of the positions that you've applied for. So even setting a goal for yourself, so applying to 10 jobs a day, right? Um, that doesn't mean just like sending out your resume just to 10 employers and using the same resume, that means taking the time to edit your resume, um, tailor your resume. And this brings me to my next point is um, updating your job search toolkit. So I think it's really, really important to make use of the time that you have right now. And like Peter said, it's really, really important to update your cover letter, to update your resume and your LinkedIn profiles um, since you're at home and you have that luxury of time. Um, Peter, do you wanna talk about the next point? Well, just to add to what you were just saying, it is definitely a numbers game. So the more you put out there, the greater the chances are that somebody will uh, pick up your resume and give you a call. So if you put out 100 resumes and then you get a call for 10 and then you get maybe even two interviews out of that, uh, it's consistent. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're consistent every day. Um, definitely. So uh, you wanted me to talk about this the job board. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, okay, well, there's a, there's a particular link. So what, what I wanted to yeah. say is... So there... I'll just flip over to the link that actually we were going to share. Right. Um, so what the advantage of uh, that most job seekers will have at this particular moment in time, as distressing at this time is, is the fact that you're not bound geographically. Meaning, if you live in Toronto, you're applying for jobs in Toronto. If you can obtain a position where you're re working remotely, you could essentially be employed by an organization that's on the other side of the country. And the more I'm talking to organizations, the more they're starting to pivot and go towards this method of hiring people to work remotely. Granted, it's industry specific, but there are a lot of industries that are moving towards this way. 
um, this particular website on here has numerous links and you can actually narrow down your search to Canada, even North America. There were a number of companies on this link that um, I had seen in the US that specifically put on there willing to hire Canadian workers. So I think it's a huge advantage which you feel positive about the fact that they can work remotely from home and work for an organization that's not even in this country. It opens up the field that much more and gives a wider array of choices and, and options for you. Awesome, thank you. Um, and I think it's also very important to be responsive. So with this day and age, when we have technology at our fingertips, it's really important to keep checking your emails, be um, you know responsive by phone. So clear your mailbox or your uh, voicemail box if you have lots of messages, because as you mentioned, it is very competitive right now as everybody's at home and they're applying to jobs. So if, if an employer reaches out to you and asks you to start within, um, you know, 24, 48 hours, you have to be ready or invite you for an interview. So you don't want to miss out on that opportunity. So being responsive and being um, easily able to be reached is important as well. Yeah, and particularly uh, that we're working remotely and companies are doing everything virtually, you'd have to be conscious of the fact that they might communicate with you through other methods other than just calling you on the phone, right? So you'd have to make mm -hmm. sure that you're aware keeping track of that sort of thing and, and being accessible whenever, whenever you can during the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also responsive as well, right? So if you receive an email, try to respond within, you know, within 24 hours, if possible. Um, I think that's also very important. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, some industries. So I know you touched a little bit about, uh, you talked a little bit about uh, some industries uh, in our earlier slides, um, but do you want to go ahead and talk about uh, the manufacturing and retail industry and some of the employers that are currently hiring in this current climate? Sure. So what's interesting about the manufacturing section uh, sector is um, companies that were typically manufacturing a particular product have now pivoted and trying to fill this niche of how do we service a greater need during this pandemic. So, for instance, there are a number of alcohol distilleries that have stopped making alcohol, but the uh, alcohol base is still relevant. And they've pivoted to making hand sanitizers and things like that so they can supply a greater need. So um, as much as you might hear that companies are closing down, manufacturing is actually kind of speeding up. As long as those companies Ramping are- Ramping up, yeah. Not making clothing anymore, making masks, uh, making anything that the healthcare profession is short of right now. So if you really look at mm -hmm. some of the remote jobs that are out there um, outside of manufacturing, there's that area, but there are still brick and mortar locations that are hiring people where you can physically still go there to work. Granted, we will vet mm -hmm. that properly to make sure we're not putting anybody in a unsafe situation because of the pandemic, but manufacturing is still definitely hiring as well as retail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that answer. So I think it's really important for you to create a plan. Um, I think that utilizing your transferable skills allows you to, you know, widen your search options. And it's also very important for you to consider um, different industries as well. And I know Peter touched upon this earlier, um, where he mentioned that uh, expanding your geographical area is very, very important. So for example, um, if you're just applying to the DTA, you know, um, now if you're working remotely, you can apply to jobs out of province as well. And that's the luxury that you have when you are remote working is being able to even apply out of country. You know, you can apply to the States and still be working from Canada. Um, so that's the advantage that you have. So try to think outside the box and try to explore as many options and different ranges of industry as possible. So if you have transferable skills that you can use in this time, um, you can definitely do that as well. Peter, do you want to give an example of what I mean by this? Well, the transferable skills uh, come into play even more so during a time like this because your resume might be geared specifically to a, a career or an industry or a position, and that particular avenue might be closed due to the pandemic as far as nobody's hiring or those businesses in and itself are, are actually shut down. So I think it's really important during this time to look at your resume and see 
the transferable skills that can be applicable to a number of other industries and curtail your resume towards that. Because as much as everybody would like to get their, their, the job that they set out to get, under the circumstances that we're in right now, it could be very difficult. So as mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier that companies are actually pivoting, uh, job seekers would have to do that as well and try to adapt to the new norm of doing things and try to see what the base of your, your skill sets are and your transferable skills and how you can apply that to different industries. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about the industries that are on, like currently rising right now and give us a little bit more detail about you know, some of the industries that are actually requiring manpower and em employees right now? Well, the healthcare industry definitely, um, uh, you know, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory with what's going on, but there are shortages in a lot of areas. And some of the, some of the information I've been receiving is uh, pretty unique to what we're doing right now. Before, say, a foreign trained doctor uh, came to this country and their, their education wasn't recognized and there had to be an equivalency or, you know, they, they had to be analyzed to see where they measure up as far as the educational system here. They're giving these foreign trained doctors opportunities to work in, in the healthcare profession in various forms uh, in the hospital in somewhat of the capacity of a doctor. Obviously not performing surgeries or anything major to that degree, but still being able to take care of patients in a, in a healthcare support role. Uh, mm -hmm. Pharmacies obviously are still continuing to be busy. They need people as far as everything from an actual pharmacy you go to, to the distribution and the warehousing of the drugs. So those are areas as well. Retail, of course, is still gonna be in demand, although we are all quarantined in, ho in our house. Uh, mm -hmm. You still need food, you still need supplies for your home, you still need to live basically mm -hmm. every day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, government services, non nonprofit, I mean, we're, we're a perfect example of that. We're a nonprofit organization and we, although we're working remotely, we're trying to conduct business as usual to the best of our abilities, given the circumstances that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. awesome. uh, E-commerce e e is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, that's all online services. Uh, mm -hmm. Companies such as Amazon, even Walmart, where you can order everything. Most companies that online. you can buy things from are switching to a curbside pickup. So. Uh, I think as we move forward through this pandemic, if it doesn't start to improve, you'll see these sort of processes implemented uh, where everything is going towards an online service. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So in this time, um, I think it would be best for individuals to expand their social and professional network as well. So that would mean reaching out to current contacts or creating new contacts via cold calling. Um, this would be a good way for you to bypass the applicant tracking system. And for those that don't know what an ATS is, it basically uh, is a software that applicants or companies use uh, to hire uh, candidates. So you'll apply using the ATS system, um, Taleo, Brassring, Bullhorn. These are all systems that companies, uh, just to name a few, um, they use to track their applicants. So. Basically, by creating those contacts, by cold calling, by doing, um, you know, virtual networking, you're able to bypass that because maybe, you know, they know someone that's currently hiring that is in need of a certain uh, position being filled and you can just give your resume to, to that person that you created that connection with or rehash that connection with. Um, and that will also help you uh, in terms of employment. And then let's take a look at uh, video interviews, because I think this is a really important uh, topic that we need to discuss. As we mentioned, you know, we're using technology more and more, and we're starting to implement different softwares and tools into our, you know, hiring practices uh, for employers as well. So, Peter, do you want to go ahead and, and talk a little bit about this? Sure. So, I think this particular area is something that people really need to focus on and uh, acclimatize themselves to the, this way of doing things. Now, mm -hmm. as I said before earlier, I kind of touched on the fact that this is all a new process for not just job seekers, for employers as well. So as they're starting to acclimatize themselves with how do we pivot and continually do business in the way that we did from a virtual standpoint, they're implementing these sort of systems as far as being able to communicate, interview, hire. Now, I do really do feel like 
you know, the pandemic is a temporary thing and we will come out of it who knows when, hopefully sooner rather than later. But I am 100% confident that moving forward, if these processes prove effective and proficient for businesses, this will be a permanent way of them doing business and part of the hiring process. So mm -hmm. even if you temporarily learn these things with the understanding that, oh, things might go back to normal, when it comes to these sort of practices, we are in the midst of a dynamic change, granted unintentional because of the circumstances, but mm -hmm. well, what's gonna come out of this would be specifically the new norm of doing things moving mm -hmm. forward. So um, mm -hmm. I would advise people to really try to, to familiarize themselves with Spark Hire, Zoom, any other telecommunication software or app or program that's out there that an employer mm -hmm. could potentially use to interview you with. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the title says, practice makes perfect, right? So for those individuals who are not as uh, tech savvy as they'd like to be, you know, just exploring these platforms, familiarizing yourself uh, with them, playing around with them, even um, inviting family members onto the platform and doing practice runs um, will definitely build your confidence because as you said, we're kind of shifting gears and these practices may be implemented, uh, you know, in the future and they're here to stay basically. So I think that the sooner that you familiarize yourself with these platforms, the more comfortable that you get with them, the better it will be for you. And these are things that you can put on your resume as well, you know, as uh, hard skills that you have. So again, um, moving forward, this will be another skill set that you've learned and tools that you're familiar with. Sure, and and familiar, things like that mm -hmm. are going to uh, prove its strengths and transferable skills as far as being able to work remotely, right? Mm -hmm, definitely, I agree. And I think that it's really important to have uh, these essential skills on your resume if you are wanting to apply to companies that are requiring you to work remotely, organization, having good communication, time management. These are some of the skills that employers are looking for um, that are hiring remotely. Would you agree, Peter? I, I, I would agree 100%. And actually, I have seen job postings with those specific requirements written into them. Um, mm -hmm. Because they want to know, one, right now, people don't really have a lot of time to train you the way they would have done traditionally before this pandemic. So they mm -hmm. want to know, okay, we finally got our business up to speed. This is what our need is. They want to know that when they hire you, there's going to be very little of a training curve in these kind of areas so that you will mm -hmm. be able to almost immediately once you get hired working from home. And the only curve would be familiarizing yourself with that particular corporation system or that company system or whatever their, their databases or, or software that they use. But all of these skills here, these nine skills that you have up on the screen, these are things that employers are specifically asking me about. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really good to know. So thank you. Okay, so let's talk about, we talked a little bit about virtual interviews, but here are some more tips that we can give you in order for you to fully be successful in your uh, video interview. So just making sure that you dress for success. A lot of times there's this misconception that, you know, just because you're doing a video interview, you can dress casual. And I definitely think that's not the case. So um, if you are doing a video interview, just make sure that you're dressed in, you know, professional business attire, um, dress shirt for women, you know, a cardigan, um, hair nicely done, a uh, ponytail or a bun. And then for men, you know, hair nicely combed. Um, and then just having good posture, because I think that really impacts your voice as well. So sitting up straight, making sure that you're not slouching, that, um, you know, you're able to project your voice in a way where people can hear you and your words are being enunciated. And you're sitting in a well-lit room. So making sure that if you are in a place where lighting is coming in and out, that you, you sit in a place where lighting is consistent and always try to use white light if possible and have a clear background. So no photos, um, no posters or any type of distractions. Uh, and then be mindful of your tone. So you don't wanna be mumbling like this where people can't hear you. So you wanna talk like really nice and loud and um, you know, be very articulate when you're conveying your thoughts. Definitely, definitely. I think the background is the, is the most important. I mean, you don't wanna have anything in the back that you know, subconsciously people might judge you on right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, sometimes people have pets or like little ornaments in the background and you just want to be mindful of that to you. It may not seem like a distraction, 
but to somebody that's doing an interview and maybe watching a video recording of your interview, it, it could be a distraction and seem unprofessional, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. And then in this time, I think, again, I can't emphasize how important it is to invest in yourself. So you want to be able to strengthen your existing skills, explore your interests, really figure out what is it that you want to do and identify closing any gaps that you might have. And consider doing online courses, webinars. There's so many resources out there free of charge completely that all you have to do is just register and watch videos and attend webinars. Even through our services, we have hundreds and hundreds of webinars and videos and resources available for our clients to use at any hour of the day. So make use of this time and, you know, upskill and reskill. And I can't emphasize how important this is. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just gonna say it, it's such a difficult thing to be working from home or being in your home looking for a job because your home is your sanctuary, and it, it's just so easy to get caught up in the comfort of it and to lie down mm -hmm. and binge watch something or or something to that degree. So yeah, definitely. Just, um, because I feel like a lot of people are taking this as a vacation, right? They're not really looking at it as an opportunity for them to upgrade their skills or learn a new skill. People are just kind of trying to wait it out, but the length of it keeps getting longer and longer, right? So every day kind of seems like the same. So you want to do something different and have a schedule, have a routine, continue your job search, continue to feel motivated. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you get hired, you know, you're going to have to build your routine again. So why not establish a routine so you're not having to readjust your whole life all over again? Absolutely. And definitely keep your mind busy. It's, it's really, really important to do that. Mm -hmm. I think mental health is really, really important during this time as well. So, you know, again, exploring and doing things that you like and that you like doing is very, very important. Definitely. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and talk about supports and benefits. So I'm just going to jump right into this because I know a lot of uh, clients uh, are asking questions about EI and the CER benefit uh, that is being offered by the government. So I just want to go over this point or some of these points in detail. And if you have questions, um, by all means, please go ahead and ask them um, at the end. So in terms of uh, employment insurance, employment insurance is for those individuals who have lost their job due to no fault of their own however, are ready to work and cannot go back to work because they're not able to find suitable employment. So I would recommend to apply as soon as possible. Don't delay this process because you may be at, at risk for losing your benefits if you wait for more than four weeks. So just make sure that if you have been laid off, that you go ahead and you start applying um, within that one week time frame. after that one week time frame, So I'm just actually gonna show you the website right now so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So let me just pull it up here. Okay, so here's the website, it's the Government of Canada website. And essentially it has all the information that you need on it. It'll give you an overview of what EI is, your eligibility, and we'll talk about eligibility um, in the next slide. Um, and the application link here. So you just scroll down. And when you're ready to start, when you've collected all your documents, when you have all your information, you just hit ready to start and then you start the application process. So it's a very, very simple process. Um, and I'll talk about the eligibility in the next slide. So it usually takes around 60 minutes to complete the application. It is a little bit lengthy because it asks you specific questions about your employment history, timeline, et cetera. So you want to make sure that you have all that information and the information is up to date. Um, you want to make sure um, you follow the guidelines because, um, again, you want to make sure that you're eligible for EI. So making sure that you had uh, insurable employment, which means you were in a legal contract. Um, you must have been without work for at least seven days in the past 52 weeks. Um, work the required number of employment hours. Now, a lot of times people apply for EI, they might have worked for two weeks or even at two months. However, the bracket is around 420 hours to 700 hours. So you have to fall under that category in order for you to be eligible for EI. And also you must have lost your job no, through no fault of your own. So it could be a layoff, it could be company restructuring uh, and also due to budgetary cuts. So um, those are some reasons as to why you could have been laid off. And you're also ready to work. So EI also looks for that. Um, 
and they will ask you for proof of active job search. So make sure that if you are applying, you're keeping track of the positions that you're applying for. Okay, um, I'm just going to talk about the information that you will need in order for you to complete your application. So you're going to need your social insurance number, your mother's maiden name, mailing address, um, banking information, and employment information. Um, you're also, people are also eligible to apply for EI, even if they're on a work permit, you just have to be legally entitled to work in Canada. So Canadian citizens, permanent residents, um, individuals who are on work permit are all eligible to apply for EI. Okay, so COVID-19, um, so people who are currently impacted by COVID-19. Now the question here is, um, can they go back to, sorry, um, if they require quarantine, uh, can they apply for EI or CERB? Now this is very tricky, so I think it's depending on situational, it depends on the situation. Um, there is a one week waiting period for EI, so you wanna make sure that, um, sorry, that there is a one week waiting period um, for EI. However, that period is being waived right now because of the current climate that we're in. Um, there is no proof uh, required for medical certification, so that's good. And you can also have your claim backdated. So for example, if you're ill right now and you currently cannot file the claim, you can do it after. Okay, and I'm just gonna discuss a little bit more about um, the CERB benefits and who can apply for those benefits. So if you've lost your job, if you're sick, if you're currently quarantined right now, or if you're caring for someone who has COVID-19 and or are staying home without pay and taking care of your children, you are eligible for applying for the CERB benefit. And I have the link as well, so I'll share that with you. Also, you should mention, uh, or I, I, I can just say it, uh, Earlier in the week, I think the applicant process were people born in January, February, and March, and then yesterday was uh, April, May, June. Now, mm -hmm. after I think everybody, regardless of when their birthday was during the year, can apply for it. And um, some of the people are talking about their money within three days. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. that's pretty quick. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so I just wanna, uh, share two more points with you regarding this topic is that the main requirement for you to be eligible for CERB benefit is that you have to have made at least $5,000 in employment income in the last year. So this is very important. And you have to have been working, then stopped working due to COVID-19. So March 15th is a very, very important date. So if you were laid off before March 15th, that means that you would have to apply for EI. However, if you were laid off uh, after March 15th due to COVID-19, then you could apply for the CERB benefit. I'm just gonna go back to the slide here. Okay, and again, if you have more questions about uh, EI or CERB, I'd be more than happy to answer all those questions and the links are down below um, so you can access more information through those links. And I also wanna encourage everyone in this current time to be patient, to be optimistic, remain in control of what you can and do a little something every single day to keep going, motivating yourself, you know, continue your job search, um, continue networking, continue applying to jobs. I can't emphasize enough how important this time is for you to use effectively. And Peter, do you wanna add anything else? Well, the patience part is, is really important. I understand exactly the frustration of of being unemployed during this time in particular because of the clients that I, I interact with. Um, but again, just to reiterate, as much as this is a difficult time for someone looking for a job, it is also not equally as difficult, but difficult for uh, businesses to try and quickly pivot and understand how to change the way of doing business without closing down and how to service the needs of customers as well as the hiring processes. So mm -hmm. as, those, Definitely. as those processes start to become a little bit more streamlined and it becomes, like I said earlier, the, 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 the new norm of doing things, then you'll see the hiring practices sort of ramp up a little bit. But right now, everybody needs to be adaptable. Job seekers need to adapt to the new way of doing things and businesses are trying to adapt new policies and procedures in the way they're doing things. So it's just gonna be a bit of a curve because 
nobody has ever experienced what we're going through right now. Mm -hmm. I definitely, definitely agree with you. I think all of us have to adjust and just kind of, you know, go with the flow, but also try to, you know, adjust as much as we can. Yeah, it's, it's not all doom and gloom. Things are going to turn it's around. Definitely not. Definitely yeah. not. And hopefully we'll come out of this a lot stronger, you know, upgraded, updated. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think um, that concludes our webinar, um, Sonia. Hi guys, thank you so much. That was great. That was really useful information that everyone could really use right now. So um, we'll open it up to questions here. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to go over. So yes, everyone, please type your questions into the Q&A tab and not the chat. Um, okay. Um, do you think that companies right now are not sponsoring people from overseas for jobs? The, uh, that's a difficult question to, to answer right now. Um, if you're asking me what my information is, I think whatever restrictions employers had previous to this pandemic mm -hmm. have sort of been completely eliminated because uh, I spoke to two employers today that were absolutely desperate to hire people because you know they're losing a lot of business every day that they're not actually in business. So I, I think you'll see a lot of the, the, the specifications that were before that employers were looking for loosened greatly to be able to fill the need of whatever uh, positions they have. But um, sorry, just to add to that, there is a restriction on travel right now. So I'm not really sure how that would impact people getting into the country. So even if an employer is willing to sponsor you, you may not be able to. So that remote work yeah, option remote. comes into play, right? Yeah, definitely. I thought, I thought that question was in reference to uh, newcomers and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Zara and Peter. Um, next question is, could you go over some, I mean, share some websites where, which people can use to apply for jobs? Uh, for remote jobs, I think um, Zara has, she can put it back up on the screen. Yeah, definitely. Uh, particular link. So it's one link that takes you to a general website, but within the website, as you go through it, it's a maze of other links. And they're all, uh, they start to narrow down specific to what you're looking for, areas of work, particular jobs, but they're all remote jobs. Thank you. And I'm, um, I just want everyone to know that you will get a recording of this webinar tomorrow. So a lot of people are asking questions about going back to certain slides. So you will be able to watch it tomorrow. So don't worry if you've missed anything, mm -hmm. you can definitely look at it again. Um, do you recommend any platforms for upskilling? Upscaling in what sense? Like upscaling, like taking more, like, you know, taking on more skills, like taking courses online. Do you see anything on resumes that stands out to you lately? Um, uh, like I said, the, mm -hmm. the resume, uh, I mean, there would be more equipped of answering the resume specific questions. But um, for me, the employers that I've sent resumes to, the ones that kind of stand out, like I said, on that particular screen, uh, or slide that we were talking about earlier are those transferable skills. They want to know that they're hiring somebody. And remember, there's a tremendous amount of trust that's going into this hiring process because they're not actually meeting you. They're seeing you virtually and then you're going to be working from home. So they have no idea of what kind of work ethic that you're, that you're going to bring being in the comfort of your own home. So highlight those transferable skills. Hopefully, they can be enough to kind of uh, fill those gaps if you don't necessarily have all the qualifications that a, that a company is looking for. But right now, mm -hmm. they are more asking me about specific transferable skills far over and above the, the actual skill sets that are on a resume, as far as experience, mm -hmm. I mean. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Definitely. is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, for sure. You know, Peter, there's so many resources available online. If you just Google online free training, 
free upgrading skills. You can have access to hundreds and hundreds of trainings and you just have to look out for the ones that have, you know, certification and they're approved. Um, and because sometimes you can purchase the certification as well. You can complete the training for free, but if you want to get the certification, you, I think it's around 20 to $30, depending on what trainings that you've done. And once you've obtained that certification, you have tangible proof that you've completed the course. LinkedIn Learning is a great resource that people can use. Um, if you have an employment consultant here at Access, I would highly encourage you to get in contact with them and they will share with you a um, list of free trainings that you can take. If you don't have a consultant and if you would like to work with a consultant, and one on one. Um, Sonia will, um, I think there's a slide at the end. If not, uh, you can visit our website and um, we can definitely help you further. Yeah, HP Life also has some really, really good courses that are free mm -hmm. on their own. I was just going to say that. Yeah, HP, yeah, free uh, IT, uh, IT training skills. Yeah, and there's a, there were a lot of uh, courses on negotiation skills, uh, customer service stuff, uh, time management, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's definitely. what I was going to talk about as well. So HP Life is actually doing two webinars next week. So I think it's the Monday and the Tuesday or the Monday and the Wednesday. You can check out on our website and um, you can sign up for them. They'll be talk talking about, um, sorry, my internet's just being slow. Um, they're going to be talking about um, uh, their HP Life platform that you can use for upgrading your skills as well. And yeah, it's a great, it's a great site. Yes, and so a lot of people are asking about if, you know, any training or certificates could be government sponsored. Um, you can check out our bridging programs that are um, subsidized by the government. So you're barely paying a fee, which you can also get reimbursed for. So you can uh, check out our website for that as well. If you two like to add anything to that. Um, no, definitely. I think you said it very nicely. Yeah. All right, thank you. And um, so this, uh, the benefits package that's been provided by the government, is it only for um, uh, permanent residents and citizens only? Um, I, I believe, uh, let me just go ahead and check. Um, you have to be eligible to work in Canada. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. I know that. Yeah. Um, um, this is the eligibility for those who are eligible for the CERB benefit. Um, to be honest, uh, I would have to get back to you on that, but Peter did raise a good point. It is for those individuals who are legally entitled to work in Canada. So permanent resident, Canadian citizen, individuals on work permits are eligible for this uh, specific grant. Yeah, any specific questions uh, relating to the eligibility of, of those particular programs, um, you can get all that information on those websites. On the website uh, here, yeah. Wait, and what about like if someone hasn't worked yet? So let's say they just arrived to Canada and they haven't worked in Canada yet. Would they be able to apply for this as well? Not for the CERB. Okay. What, what, what do you know if there's anything else that they can apply for? Um, well, I mean, they wouldn't qualify for unemployment insurance because yeah, because uh, they haven't they been working been, here. They haven't been working here. Yeah. Um, sorry, my I think that would be that that would be a good question to perhaps maybe call or send in uh, through this portal um, because I'm sure there are a lot of people that are experiencing the same type of challenge yeah. right now where they're not able to work, um, but they're not unemployed. Uh, so they might be eligible it's just that i'm not 100 percent sure so i don't want to say yes or no um however this uh the application process uh does ask you some various questions so if they want to go ahead and see if they're eligible they can complete the application and um through the application they may be able to find that answer well you know my understanding of of, of some of the government programs i mean if they don't if they aren't eligible for the crb or the e, or ei obviously because they haven't worked i mean ow is always still uh, a resource for them if that's mm -hmm. need or they're in that particular situation so they might want to look into that as well and would it be um would people be eligible for it if they have to stay home to take care of their kids because there's no school or daycare um, would they yes. be qualified as well yes or, definitely so if you have to ahead. stay home um, yeah. If you have to stay home and take care of your children, you can definitely apply for the CERB grant, um, as that is one of the qualifications. But uh, the two main points that I had mentioned that, you know, you have to have at least made 
$5,000 worth of income in the past year or this 12 calendar month period time period. Okay, thank you. And do we know of any job fairs that might be happening online in the near future? <laughs> well, I'm trying to organize um, some with uh, organizations that are particularly looking to hire remotely. Um, I will keep everybody up to date, the, the employment counselors that, that are in my team, and I'll share that with everybody else in Access uh, as we move forward. It's a little bit of a logistical nightmare as far as getting a bunch of organizations together or even just one to commit to this sort of uh, platform to do that from. And like I said, it's an adjustment for us and it's an adjustment for employers as a well. A lot of companies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm working on that right now off the top of my head. I don't, I don't know of any, uh, there might be other employer, employer liaisons within Access that maybe doing some, but um, mm -hmm. I, I would have to look into that. I don't know, do you know of any that are going on right now? I know that uh, Sobeys had a virtual job fair just recently, it just passed. So that's the one that I'm familiar with. However, like you said, you know, um, if we have that information, we will definitely share that with our clients and uh, ECs throughout the organization. And if you have a consultant, um, I would highly recommend that you reach out to them and they, be, they would be able to provide you with more information. Yeah, they receive that, that, that information on a, on a daily or at least a weekly uh, basis. basis. Yeah. I know job fairs in the traditional sense that we used to do them, uh, they're not really going to be operating in that sense because even the Soviets one was sort of like a page with information and then a link to apply online. So, mm, uh, okay. Not, yeah, not they're going to be different. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And let's say someone has been working, but they haven't filed for taxes at all yet. Would they be qualified as well for the benefit? So the, the taxation of not, uh, not, sorry, not filing your taxes uh, is something completely separate. If you mm -hmm. work and you had deductions from your paycheck, meaning you had a pay stub and it showed you all the deductions, uh, then you were paying taxes, so you, so you would be qualified. So when you file your taxes, it has nothing to do with the eligibility of these particular programs. What do you think the employment rate will be like, you know, once everything is back to close to being normal? Do you think that people will start hiring back again? And um, do you think you see that? Yeah, I definitely do. Uh, I just heard today that WestJet is rehiring 600 other employees. Um, because wow. of the, so is Air Canada. I think they're hiring 16,000 employees back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the government really has stepped up um, as far as uh, the stimulus package that they put in place to help businesses. So it's actually showing that businesses are receiving that money from the government. And because of the subsidy, they're, they're, they're able to rehire the people that, that they had, had to let go, unfortunately, in the beginning. And not only mm -hmm. rehire those people, actually hire new people as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so reassuring to hear. It makes me feel so good because I feel like life is kind of returning back to normal slowly, but surely, you know, um, so that's really positive news. Thank you for sharing that. A new that. normal. A new normal. It isn't a going new normal. normal. That's right. <laughs> a new upgraded normal. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, there's a lot of people who, are, you know, there's businesses that are still open and these people are still going to work. If they're afraid to get sick, um, do you think that they would be able to stay home um, and not lose their jobs? Well, I think everybody has a right to safety and to not expose themselves to this uh, pandemic. So the choice is really up to you. If you feel that you're working in a safe, uh, unsafe environment and you feel that the chances of you contracting this virus are great, then I would say definitely stay home. Um, and if you worked enough, like Zero was touching on before, you would qualify for the CERB. Um, mm -hmm, I would definitely. be hard to, to advise anyone to continue to work if they were feeling unsafe. Uh, again, these are conversations that you should have with your employer and see how receptive those employers are. If you are not working in an industry that is deemed an essential service, then I think by every rationale and logic in my mind, you would probably be better served staying home. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if that answered. Did I answer that question? I, I... 
I, I think, think you answered a couple of questions. <laughs> so that's good. Um, okay, so I'm just going with, there's some questions that you've already pretty much answered. Um, and then there are some questions that we really don't know the answer for. We don't know when everything is going to be, you know, the new normal again. We don't know when this is all going to be over. So we really can't answer those questions. Um, we're, I, we're all in the same boat. No one knows. Um, okay, so again, same question. Uh, just going through them. Um, can you give examples of transferable skills? Um, that would help, especially in today's um, situation. Sure, I, I, Jira, can you can you throw that slide back up on the screen? Yeah, for sure, for sure. We can talk about it. Uh, yeah, here we go. And other ones yeah. that might. Oh, okay. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, like, um, don't limit yourself to just this list. There are so many more that you know that you can use and that you can mention in your resume. But these are just a few uh, that we thought were really important that we would highlight and share with all of you. Peter, do you want to go ahead and add? Well, I mean, the the ones that I would I would add to this fall kind of a subcategory to some of these categories, like communication. I I I think uh, works well in groups. Works well independently. I mean, you kind of have all those things there. I, I don't know, off the top mm -hmm. of my head, can you, can you think of anything else that would be something you should highlight on a resume outside of these nine headings? Um, I mean, again, it depends on the industry, right? It, it depends on what the employer is looking for. So going through the job posting um, is really important as well and tailoring and targeting your resume. So um, that, that's what I have to say. Yeah, I think if you have uh, some variation of all nine of these or you know seven out of the nine uh i think it should be pretty sufficient i mean i'm just trying to relate it to every time i think about things like this and i get a question like that i'm always relating it to how you would work remotely like um, for example if you're uh like you know if you're doing data entry right and you you have typing skills that could also be used, um, you know, in, a, in an admin position. So that is a transferable yeah. skill. So that's what you would indicate, you know, um, data entry skills or typing speed or typing skills. So um, that's just an example that I can provide. I don't know, attention to detail would be a, a yeah. huge one. Just anything that you can transfer, you know, to a different industry or a different position would be a transferable skill. Does that... I don't know yeah, I think, no, thank you. You actually answered a few questions. So thank okay, you for that. Sure. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm just going over. There's a lot of questions that are being asked, like we wouldn't know the answer to, uh, like, again, when this is all going to be over or um, the people who are new to Canada have never worked in Canada. If you want to find out if you'd be legible for some sort of benefits, you would have to find out for yourself. Um, because I don't think we have that information, correct? For the most part, and I, I would say if you're new and you've never worked here, you're, you're not going to qualify for the CERB and you're not going to qualify for EI, um, you would mm -hmm. probably have to go check with whatever municipality you're in and, and go through Ontario Works. I think Ontario Works has their own set of eligibility and suitability criteria. So you have to make sure that you fall under or within that bracket in order for you to get that support as well. Sure. But they're not as rigid as some of the other programs, right? I mean, Ontario definitely. Works. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, but definitely look, look that up or visit. Well, actually, I was about to say visit the office in your, you can't even do that now. So everything is virtual. You'll have to look it up online unfortunately, but Ontario Works is the only other program I could think about. Unless you have some sort of disability to a certain degree, it would be ODSP. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And um, getting EI, does that depend on salary or does it depend on how long you've been working? Do you know how, can you tell us how that works? It, it depends on how long you've been working. Okay. And do you know how long people have to work to be eligible for EI? I don't know if those requirements have changed under the pandemic. Uh, I know prior to that, you had to have been working um, prior to a, a, applying. I think it was 11 weeks. Is that right, Sarah? I, I, I... So um, instead of a time frame, it's actually hours. So you have to right. have 420 hours 
uh, up to 700 hours of okay. actual paid work. Yeah. Um, so that's it's based off of how many hours you've worked. Thank you. And I'm just uh, going over. And I believe it's about uh, $1,800 a month uh, at max uh, every month that you can up to $1,800 a month that you can receive. So that's the max. Um, that, that's the max. The max. Yeah. And Peter, do you know any uh, trade uh, jobs that you see a lot popping up that are like, very popular? Plumbing, uh, mm -hmm. electrical, anything to do with uh, like an electrician, whatever the capacity of that is. Um, a lot of technical jobs as far as IT, but uh, uh, more um, running data cables and doing, doing that kind of stuff because corporations, as I said, are they're moving forward and they're implementing these processes of, of doing a virtual business, they need more capacity to do that. So um, there are a lot of tech jobs that I've come across and a lot of companies that are looking specifically for those jobs for people to be able to come in and set up servers, run data cables, mm -hmm. things of that nature. We were just talking about Zoom, right? We were saying how they're expanding oh, because hard. so many like, companies yeah, are, yeah. 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 Um, but those aren't really like uh, trades jobs though. Um, oh yeah, we got sidetracked, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. So, um, I yeah, we're, that's to the end. I know there's a lot of questions about things that you missed, so you can watch this webinar again tomorrow. You will get a recording tomorrow. And um, about our courses, we have bridging programs. As a lot of people are asking if we have courses. So we have programs and they're bridging programs that are sector specific. And they're called bridging programs because they help bridge the gap between your experience from overseas to the in work culture. And um, we've got some other programs for youth, um, people in leadership, for women, um, for entrepreneurs. So you can check all of that out on our website. So please, I encourage you all to go to our website and um, have a look because it'll answer a lot of your questions. Um, mm -hmm. Azir, do you have another slide? Uh, no, this is the last slide. Oh, okay. So um, I, I was just going to basically go over that right now because we're delivering everything online. Um, you can check out our website and you can click on um, e-access, I think, and you can click on it and you'll see all the resources that you need. So Sarah, maybe if you can go to our website. Um, of course, sorry, I'll just do that. that. Thank you. No problem. Just loading. Yeah, so if on, on the top right, it says e-access. If you click there, you'll see um, a lot of our e-resources that we have. So past uh, webinars for on different topics, resume related, networking, interview tips, and we've got other um, resources for you to look at too. So like uh, there's articles, there's uh, examples of different things that you might be looking for. So have a look at that. And then if you go back to our page, I'll show them how to um, access our um, webinars. Yeah, so as actually the top banner right there, it'll link you to our, so if you click on that, it'll take you straight to our webinar page and you can see how many webinars we have happening in April. Um, our next webinar is, I believe next week, April 15th. And um, you can register for that as well if you like. So there, there's tons of webinars on, on there, so check them out. And um, if you do want to speak to an employment consultant, because you can see Zara and Peter, they're all working right now. Um, we are open nine to five. It's just, we don't have a physical location. We're all online. So if you are interested in speaking to an employment consultant, we can help you with your job search. You can call the closest access location and um, some, the receptionist will be able to direct you to an employment consultant who can start helping you. So we're still here for you. 
um, and we will still be helping you. And Darren, Peter, I just want to thank you so much for this great presentation today. We really needed no something like to clarify a lot of questions that people had, and I myself had. So thank you very much. No worries. Thank you thank so you. much for thank having you. us. That's thank a pleasure. You, we had so much fun doing this. We might do it again. <laughs> I think we might need you to. <laughs> we might do it again. It was so much fun. <laughs> All right. So uh, have you. a great evening. Have a great long weekend, everyone. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. you. Bye. Be safe.